This is Living Waters of Grace, the teaching ministry of Lewis Harrell, assistant pastor of Calvary Chapel of Westmoreland County in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Now here's Pastor Lewis as he continues teaching through God's Word. You can't listen to everybody because some were sent and some just went. And when she used to tell me that, I didn't quite understand it when I was young, but even more and more now that becomes real clear. Everyone who stands up and teaches or preaches the Word of God was not necessarily called by God. And we know that by the message. And we know that by their fruits. And we'll talk more about that. And several times it says here in this verse, in this chapter, I have not sent them whom I did not sin. He talks about that. Have you ever seen someone do a double take in real life? In the movies, you always see someone minding their own business, but then something so dramatic happens to them that they have to look at it again, as if they couldn't believe that just happened to them. Has that ever happened to you while you're scrolling through social media, where you're listening to an internet prophet who says something that contradicts the Word of God? Today, Pastor Lewis warns you of those who preach, but not from the Bible. Now here's Pastor Lewis in the book of 2 Peter chapter 2 with today's edition of Living Waters of Grace. I want to ask you if you would turn your Bibles with me to 2 Peter beginning at chapter 1. So just starting there, 2 Peter verse 1, he says, But there are also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of of the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example to those who afterward would live ungodly and delivered righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing the lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment and especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed, and they are, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. So as we read through this, we have to look first back at verse 1 where it says, but there were also false prophets among the people, or yeah, among the people. So he's talking about, when he says among the people, he's talking about among the people of Israel. And to get a backdrop on where Peter is going with this, because Peter is, again, Peter being under the The teaching of Jesus Christ, he remembers all these things that Jesus has talked about. And Peter being filled with the spirit and knowing that his time is short, he is now warning the people. Just as he's warning us in his word. See, the Bible tells us that the word of God, it does three things. It edifies. I just get a sense as I study this, I get a sense that this morning that the word of God is doing all three of those things for us. It is definitely building us up by getting more knowledge and understanding more about false teachers and false prophets. He is definitely warning us to let us know that these things are here. But then he is also comforting us 
because we know that in the word of God, in the truth of the word of God, we have our defense against that. In the truth of the word of God, by knowing the word of God, it allows us to have our defense against false teaching. So this is particularly important for me because in my infancy, we sat under, when I say we, me and my family, we sat under some teaching that was in error. And it was in our infancy because so we didn't know, we didn't realize. We, you see, we understand now that in order to be able to know what false teaching is, you first have to know what truth is. And if you had not sat under truth, then it's going to be very hard to know what false teaching is. Oh, it all sounds logical. It sounds good. Tickles the ears. It you know, preaches and, and, and speaks to your flesh. So it causes you to feel good. <laughs> and if you don't have to listen, listen, if you don't have to listen to, to someone telling you how much you sin, if you ain't got to listen to that, I mean, that's an easy Sunday. So we did. We sat under some teaching that wasn't quite there. And because we were in our infancy, we didn't really have those alarms that go off that you probably get now. And I, we, we certainly get, I certainly get those alarms that go off when you hear teaching that is contrary to the word of God. But we didn't have those alarms in our infancy because we didn't know. So what Pastor Clark and I want to do here is to make sure that by the fear of God and through the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that we teach according to the word of God. So that if you do hear false teaching, you have a radar that goes off. And we'll let you know that this is not in concert with the word of God. But that is in contrast to. So when he says here, but there will also, there were also false prophets among the people. The reason why he said there were also false prophets among the people is because back in chapter 1, beginning at verse 19, looking at 19 and 20, he talked about the true prophets. And he says this. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and a morning star rises in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. For prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So here, Peter's talking about the true prophets who spoke under the power and of the, of the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, just to set the table for this, I do want to go back and just look at what God is, is talking about when he talks about these, these prophets and, and how the, the prophets who were among the false prophets. So I'm going to go back to Deuteronomy first, and I want to look at verse uh, chapter 13 in the book of Deuteronomy. In that particular scripture, the Bible talks about the punishment of the apostates, and these are people that were really uh, the, the, these false prophets that have come out among the real prophets. And he says this, if there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, this is in verse one, and he gives you a sign or a wonder and the sign or the wonder comes to pass of which he spoke to you saying, let's go after other gods, which you have not known and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. You shall serve him and hold fast to him. But the prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken in order to turn you away from the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of bondage to entice you from the way in which the Lord your God commanded you to walk. So you shall put away the evil from your midst." So this is the warning that Moses gave to the people back in Deuteronomy. 
And, and, and the Lord spoke even more about these false prophets and, and warned the people that, yes, among my true prophets, there are also these false prophets. Now, are the true prophets were men who the Lord had given the word or a message to these prophets to give to the people. And they spoke God's word. They were his messengers. And they were his messengers because, you know, as it says in Hebrews, in, in past times, you know, God spoke by his prophets. And these were the men that, that, that God spoke through to give the people a message. You see, when they went to Mount Sinai and they all gathered around and they said they wanted to hear it from the Lord directly, they said it. <laughs> But then when they got there and they saw the power of God, they saw the thundering and they saw the lightning, and they saw the smoke and they saw the Lord descending upon the mountain. They couldn't deal with it. And so they told Moses, no, 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 Moses, we don't want to hear him speak. Because when the Lord opened his mouth, it sounded like thunder, it sounded like many waters. It was powerful. And they were scared and they said, no, we don't want to hear from the Lord. Let him speak to you and you tell us <laughs> what he has to say. We'll hear from you, but we can't, we don't want to hear from the, you know, directly from the Lord. And from that time on, he began to speak to the people through the prophets. So we understand that these old prophets, and there were many of them, that the Lord spoke to and gave powerful messages. And I want to look at just one other thing. I want to go to Jeremiah. If we can go to Jeremiah just very quickly. Jeremiah, we're going to start at, verse, at chapter 14 because he has some interesting things to say here in Jeremiah chapter 14 concerning false prophets. And I'm just going to start right here at verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 13, and it says this. And the Lord said to me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I have not sent them, commanded them, nor spoken to them. They prophesy to you a false vision, divination, a worthless thing, the deceit of their hearts. And that's exactly what false teachers do. They talk and speak through the deceit of their own hearts. He goes on and says, therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who prophesy in my name, whom I did not send, and who say, sword and famine shall not be in this land, by sword, if you want to go on, those prophets shall be consumed. Now, we know that the Lord had already said, you're going to go into captivity, and it's, you're going to have to deal with the sword. You're going to have to deal with famine. It's going to happen. But the false prophets come, and because they want to speak peace, where the Lord said, there's not going to be peace, you're going to have to deal with my wrath because of your sin. The false prophets want to come in and say, no, no, it's going to be well, which is exactly what a lot of them do today, right? When, you know, uh, you know all's good, all's good. The Lord's going to give you money. You're going to be rich. You're going to, you're going to have all these things. You're not going to have to deal with your sin. Your sin is fine. That's a message from a false prophet. And the Lord said, I did not sin them. So he says, by my word, by sword and famine, these prophets shall be consumed and the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. The very thing that those false prophets said wasn't going to come. They will have no, no one to bury them, them nor their wives, nor their sons nor their daughters, for I will pour their wickedness on them. A few weeks ago, when I was talking about false teachers, because we, we've been talking a lot about that, because Peter's talked about it, Paul's talked about it, and we made a statement that came from my grandmother, who I see as a very, who I saw as a very wise woman. When she said, look, when she was telling me about preachers, you know, you can't listen to everybody because some were sent and some just went. And when she used to tell me that, I didn't quite understand it when I was young, but even more and more now that becomes real clear. Everyone who stands up and teaches or preaches the word of God was not necessarily called by God. And we know that by the message, and we know that by their fruits, and we'll talk more about that. And several times, it says here in this verse, in this chapter, I have not sent them whom I did not send. He talks about that. Now we're going to go very quickly over to Jeremiah 23. I just think it's important that we set the table when he's talking about these false prophets because he's going to do the same thing with the false teachers. And I'm just going to start here at verse 21. He says this. Jeremiah chapter 23, and I'm just going to start here, verse 21. He says, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood by my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then 
they would have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. And one of the things that happens when it comes to false prophets, when they are teaching, when false prophets are teaching, false teachers are preaching, people are not going to repent because they're not hearing the word of God. They're not hearing the truth of God. So most people will not repent. And he said, if they had heard my word, then they would have turned from the evil of their doings. And he goes, and I want to drop down to verse 25 here. He says, I have heard what these prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long will this be in the heart of the prophets who prophesy lies? Indeed, they are prophets of the dis- by their dreams, which everyone tells his neighbor as their fathers forgot my name for Baal. The prophet who has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he who has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, says the Lord? Is not my word like a fire? Is not my word like a fire? Do you remember what the the disciples, when they were on the road to Emmaus, what they said when they heard Jesus teaching and opening up the scriptures to them. And after they realized that it was Jesus, they knew, they said, oh, did our hearts not burn when he opened up the scriptures to us? Because the word of God is like a fire. It will consume. It will burn away the things that are not necessary, the things that are not holy. It consumes. It puts us in the fire so that our faith can be solidified, can be strengthened. And he says here, and like a hammer that breaks the rocks in pieces. Oh, the word of God can break up that old hard heart, can it? It it, it can cause us to to be broken. It causes us to be broken. It it causes us the pride and, and all those things that causes us to be hard of heart. The word of God breaks those things up causes us to be broken. He says he's, he's near to those who have a contrite spirit, to those who have a broken and a contrite heart. He's near to those people. He goes on, he says, Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, says the Lord, who use their tongues and say, he says, behold, I am against those who prophesy false dreams says the Lord, and tell them and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. And here we go again. Yet I did not send them or commend them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, says the Lord. So that's the backdrop when he says that, but among them, But among them, there were false prophets among the people. And they did a lot of damage. They did a lot of damage. They gave people false hope. They gave people this this understanding that things were going to be okay when the Lord prophesied and said, no, there's going to be famine. There's going to be sword. There's going to be judgment because of the sin that you have committed. There's going to be. But he says, I did not send them. So we go back now to 2 Peter chapter 2. Go back to verse 1. He says, but there are also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you. So now he's bringing it to the current, the current state. He's saying, look, just like there were false prophets back in the Old Testament, back in the old times, who prophesied lies, there's going to be false teachers also among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, damaging heresies, even denying the Lord who brought them, denying the Lord who brought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. Now, when you look at Peter, who talks about these false prophets or these false teachers that are coming in, we also know that Paul talked quite a bit. He warned the people about it as well, because Paul knew when he was getting close to his departure, he knew that these false teachers would take occasion or use that as an occasion to come in and bring in bad doctrine. And he began to talk with the, uh, uh, with, with the elders and the people of, um, of Ephesus. 
He began to talk with them, and he met with them. And he said this, and this is over in Acts chapter 20. And I'm going to start right here in verse 28. He says, therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Take heed. Listen to what I have to say. To shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. Verse 29, for I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Paul said, I warned you that these false teachers were going to be coming. I'm warning you now while I'm still with you. And Peter is doing the exact same thing. And this is, again, going back to the commandment that he got, that he received from the Lord to strengthen his brothers once he is converted. So he's now warning them and saying, look, be aware. These false teachers are going to come in among you, and they're going to bring in this destructive doctrine, these, these, this heresy, even denying the Lord who bought them. Now, remember, he said secretly. He said secretly. So they're not going to be coming in just announcing bad doctrine. They're not going to have on signs that says, I'm a false teacher. They're going to come in amongst the people. They're going to rise up amongst the people. And once they get to the point of being a teacher or being a pastor, then secretly they will bring in this doctrine. They won't bring it all in at one time. They'll mix it with the true doctrine. And then eventually it will be mostly false doctrine, little, and then again eventually, because they're not they're not bringing them in to, they're not teaching the people to cause them to go after Jesus. They're teaching people to cause them to go after themselves. They're promoting themselves. And whenever you have someone that's teaching the word of God and you come away knowing more about them than you know about Jesus, that's probably not a good thing. You come in, admi- you leave admiring them and you haven't heard much at all about what it is in Jesus that we have. That's probably not a good thing. But this is what they do because they're drawing people after themselves. And they bring in this doctrine and and even denying, even to the point of denying the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we know that one of the ways to know what a false teacher is, what do they say about Jesus Christ? What do they say about Jesus Christ? Are they saying that he has come in the flesh? Are they saying that he is the son of God? Or they're saying he's just some other spirit that's out there. He's a God. What are they saying about Jesus Christ? First John. John has something very interesting what he says. Over in First John, he says, starting at verse 22, he says, Who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. And then over in chapter 4 of the same book, 1 John, he says this, starting in verse 2. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that says that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and is now already in the world. What you've heard today is just one message from a series going through 1st and 2nd Peter. Pastor Lewis is teaching through this series here on Living Waters of Grace. If you're new to this program, we have two pastors who alternate teachings. Pastor Clark and Pastor Lewis also teach at Calvary Chapel, Westmoreland in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. If you are interested in hearing more messages like this one, head on over to calvarychapelonline.com and find the Listen tab. We trust that what you've heard here on the radio will make an impact in your everyday life. Calvary Chapel Westmoreland is located at 207 Hudson Street in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. If you're in the area, we'd love to see you this Sunday at 10.30 a.m. 
Head over to our website, calvarychapelonline.com for more information. We offer a live stream of the services for those who live further away. We also wanted you to be aware that we'll be moving our radio station from 100.3 to 91.7 in the near future. Please pray about helping support the new station that will reach thousands more listeners. If God has placed it on your heart to support this new station, feel free to send gifts to Grace FM, PO Box 716, Greensburg, Pennsylvania, 15601. Thanks for considering this opportunity and thanks for listening today. There's so much more to look forward to in this series as Pastor Lewis continues to teach through the writings of Peter. If you're ever in the place where you feel like no one can relate to unjust suffering while taking a stand for Christ, Peter is your God. His experience is something to hold on to. We'll be here again on Living Waters of Grace.